Hello everybody, and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conniger, and I'm building a Kit Fox Series 7 STI, which should be right here. In this video, I'm going to be covering a step that I skipped over when I did the seat pan install video, and it's step number 149. Match drilling the seat to the six mounting tab holes on the fuselage, and then installing the cam locks underneath the seat pan. For some reason this was left out of that previous video and I wanted to be sure to cover it. In this step you can see the seat pan, the screw and washer that'll go through the top, and then you can see the cam lock down below the fuselage tab with two rivets in place. And the six locations on the seat on the seat pan are four at the bottom where your thighs sit approximately and one at the top center for each pilot and co-pilot seat. All right, there's a discrepancy here because it says 0.1875, but then it says 3 16 And the 0.1875 is definitely much larger than 3 16 All right, it says to match drill the seat pan of these six, uh, these six tabs in the airplane. And it says match drill seat with mounting tab, 3 16 Also, the instructions say that tabs are pre-drilled for cam locks and must be re-drilled to fit the nut plates using a number 40 drill bit. So I'm gonna use a number 40 drill bit on them and drill them out. At the same time, then I'll use the 3 16 bit on the seat itself, because I assume that the whatever fastener goes through there needs to be big enough for a 3 16 I did mention that the 0.1875 reamer is much larger than the 3 16 bit. Now that was a misstatement on my part. But what I did see was that the holes that were in the fuselage tabs were just much smaller than the 0.1875 reamer. And I thought that they had already been drilled to 3 16 So I stand corrected. Not much comes off with the number 40. So that's done. Now we'll match drill the seat pan. six that's really short so i think i'll use my long number 40 and see if that can't get me up in there because they're about a foot long pretty handy for some of these tight spaces and since you probably can't see the tab is up in here and i gotta get down under here to get up into here but i have to get past those things which are in the way so that bit should Help me get right up there. The June bugs are out in force, which is pretty awesome. And all these other flies. And there's four out of six. All right, that was done with the number 40. Now I'm gonna drill the holes in the Seat pan to 3 16 that's how I interpret it. Match drill seat with mounting tab, 3 16 of an inch. So here we go.
All right, that's done. Now I need some cam locks, a nut or a nut plate, washer, rivet, monel, and screws. So let's gather the hardware. So 91, 175 is uh, CC clips. They're in box eight. I looked it up in the inventory and it's, I see a seat mount hardware kit. So I'm gonna look in this little bag and see what kind of goodies we got. Let's put you over here so you can look too. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. We got here, we got some washers. Hopefully those are 91 151s. They are, and there's six of those. These little doohickeys, which must be the nut plate. Nut plate, six of those. Okay, look at here, we got 91 121 machine screws, six of those. I just pulled six out of my other kit. And these are the seat mounting hardware rivet monels. Monal. And there's going to be 12 of those. This says quantity 15. They must be expecting me to break some. So hopefully I do not. And I'm going to put these six screws back where they came from out of my other nut and bolt storage area. 91 121s. Technically, I suppose I could use them out of here, but later on it's going to be hard to go locate those other ones that are in a different inventory area. So I would rather just have them all in one big bag instead of going to look in the specific kits. But I guess for some things that makes things easier. So now that I've pre-drilled everything to 3 16 those are done. Cam locks must be re-drilled to fit the nut plates using a number 40 drill, which I already did. underneath but match drilling there's no way these screws are going to go through what that number 40 did I don't believe let's take a look that needs to be a lot bigger so the number 40 maybe what they mean is the number 40 is what I use for the mono. Mono. For the mono. Mono. Uh, rivets. Because this definitely has to be 0.1875, I think, or 3 16 because that's not going to go through there. So I've got the 0.1875 reamer here. It's going to take quite a bit to get this to go through that hole. Like, quite a bit, because that's not even close. So, I have to drill those tabs too big. Do not need them that big. Match drill seat with mounting tab, 0.1875. Match drill the seat to the six mounting tab holes in the fuselage. Remove the seat pan and install the nut plates as shown. The tabs are pre-drilled for cam locks and must be re-drilled to fit the nut plate using a number 40. This is almost one of those moments where you can see the smoke turning coming out of my mind as I test fit the reamer and it doesn't fit and then I test fit a screw and it doesn't fit and you know you have one hole but you need three holes and one of the holes needs to accept one of these screws and the supposed pre-drilled holes aren't there so it's best just to take the piece over to the airplane set it in there see what makes sense in your mind and then go from there what I'm about to do is step over to the fuselage, set the piece up there, and figure out what I need to do to make this work. All right. So this is going to mount under here 
longitudinally. I need to drill those out and probably ream them to point 0.1875. And in doing so, I'm going to have to line these up and drill them, two holes in each, to put those rivets in. So I'll need 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 holes. So I should probably mark those, but first I'm going to I'm going to drill these out, see if I can put the screw through it, tighten it down so I can mark them good, keep them in place, held in place while I mark them, pull them off, and drill them. Well, that's a lot. I may have said too much there, but you get the idea, I think. But in order to get that there, I'm going to have to drill that hole bigger. Some hard stuff. Get a little cut in oil because that helps everything glide through. Tap magic is the juice. Okay, another one behind you. Right up here. All right, those are done. And I suppose I'll deburr them because I love to deburr them. And maybe I'll just ream them quick, just to make sure. Of course, that needs to be tightened. get our other reaming holder a little more suited for the 0.1875 and not tight enough Cleaning up the, the reamer here, and then we'll be deburring. Of course, I can't seem to find the case that I had the reamer in. There it is, right on top of the toolbox, 0.1875. Let me put that away. Organization is the key. Some might refer to that as cross cockpit. Let me just walk all the way over there instead of being lazy.
Well, that is terrible on the back side. A little bit better. Can't get really, can't get straight on with that. So I have to monkey around a little bit in here. There, that feels better. That one's pretty rough on the bottom also. Much better. Oh, that one feels nice all around. Okay, done with the deburring. Okay, so I put the screw up through the bottom and tighten the nut plate on. I'm gonna try to center it up here and just make a little mark in the center where to drill it. I'm gonna do that for all the other ones. Seems like the easier way to get things lined up. I don't know if these nut plates are self-locking, but I can't seem to screw the screw in much farther than that without the use of tools. So right now I'm not gonna force it because they're, they're probably self-locking, use once, and then you have to repeat, throw them away or something. I've tightened up a lot of lock nuts on the airplane that. I'm going to have to go back and replace because they have the, the self-locking ring inside and I've I've put them on for example on the on the center console I don't know how many times I've put those things on and taken them off that they're certainly shot I'm sure some people said that you could get a bunch of a bunch of nuts from the hardware store same diameter same thread pattern use those temporarily but it's kind of a horse apiece in my mind. I'll probably hit this with the snap, snap punch in the center of those blue holes. And then, and then the number 40 bit. Let's see if I can get these things lined up, put into place, get those monal rivets put on there. Like those June bugs are having a great time running into things. Wish they'd run into my bug zapper. Of 
course I put my number 40 drill bit away, so I'll get that out again. It's good practice putting things away and getting it out again. This time I'll use a shorty. A little bit of cutting oil. Let's see what we can do. Let's try this one right up front first. Nice and hard. One down, six to go. Five to go, sorry. Six total.
just crawled down my back. That's great. And my drill bit stuck. Get out of there. Whatever it is, is hungry. Okay, that's done. It was a little more in depth than I thought it was going to be. When it said match drill the holes, I just figured I would drill a hole through the tab into the seat pan and screw the seat pan together. But I guess that is not the case. So I'm going to clean these up, get my Monel rivets ready, and hopefully everything fits right in perfectly together, which is usually the case. So it looks like the nut plate let me rivet it in place. I don't know if I should tighten it first and then rivet it in place. It does look like these washer seat pan I'm going to rivet these in place here, and the seat pan will go on over the top with the screw in the washer. So we'll pace ourselves. We'll start with two rivets and an up plate. Get our handy dandy riveting tool out, which I think is going to need a little rekeying because these look like they're extra small. They are. Fortunately, they fit this little small guy on here. Apparently, the riveting tool is metric. So we'll swap out the heads. I think this last one was a 16th or so. Maybe it was an eighth. Maybe this one is a 16th or some metric size. It doesn't say, so so I don't know. Probably did on the package when I got it. Okay, I've got the head swapped out. So let's put this first one in, see how it turns out. So the plate's supposed to go on the bottom. And the rivet goes over the top. There's one. Make sure everything's tight. Like a tiger. And there's two. 
Okay. That's easy. I'm sure I'm doing the best job anybody's ever seen. Now, on this back one, I'm going to bring in a little behind the scenes action here. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but the plate is out a little bit because it's hitting the weld up top. So it's not completely parallel with the tab. Hopefully parallel enough to get a, to get a screw in there. Let's see how the rest of them go. One's gonna have the same problem. The top is gonna hit that weld. Not much I can do about that. It hits the weld a lot. Can't really grind much off the top of this thing, otherwise I won't have enough bearing surface to pull it in. And I'm pretty sure I don't want to grind the weld at all or file it. So I'm going to bring it up under the weld, start with this top one, and hopefully I can get that bottom one in too. I like is there's always some little challenge. I don't see that I could have moved these down much further. doesn't count in a lot of places. This is probably why they gave you 15 of them instead of the right amount. It appears that I'm pretty good at buggering these up. Well, I think I'm going to Line it up a little bit better with that number 40 bit. Since that fits in there perfectly. Yeah, excellent. place there it is those are good to drive over with your vehicle probably great for extra large airplane tires too I'm having enough problems with the tires the way it is I don't need any help hopefully I don't have any more weld issues on the bottom there's a weld there everywhere there's a weld but it looks like these are farther apart than those at the top. We will soon see. Oh, that feels good. That looks good. 
feels like it's right up against the back. Not a lot of travel on these. The Monals, or Monale. I'm gonna call them Monals for now. Okay, lights went out, that means it's midnight. Alexa, turn on garage. Good girl. Okay. Okay, two to go. Nice and flush. Maybe it needs some coaxing with the... Oh, there we go. Last one. This wouldn't be a bad idea for the floorboards for some of these screws that go in there, except for the tabs are much smaller than these tabs. So I think somebody mentioned the Tinnerman nut that might be the way to go. Obviously those rib nuts that I tried weren't weren't the technique of choice. There. All right, six of those babies down. Let's put the seat pan in and screw it in or see if there's 10 other steps to do first. Let's come over and take a look at our instructions. Good for you to see it. Match drill the seat to the six mounting tab holes on the fuselage. We did that. That is down 149. Cut left, right, center slots in the seat pan for the seat belts to pass through. I have done that already. We're using the dimensions and the locations shown in the drawings. The center slot is at the top of the curved center divider and centered in the curve did that. If the seat pan will not saddle cleanly into the fuselage tubing, file or sand off any bumps or irregularities that may be causing the interference on the backside of the seat pan. Upon final assembly, install the seat pan to the seat mounting tabs on the fuselage using the hardware shown. And the hardware shown will be one of these with one of these going into the nut plates that I that I just installed on the bottom. And got those rivet mono. Um, I imagine we're gonna tighten those to hand tightness. It's an AN5261. I'm gonna go back here to the building builder's tips. Builder's tips. There's a section on tightening things, special section. Somebody turned me on to it. Of course, I read it two years ago and didn't remember it. So I'm using an AN526, an AN5 uh, inch pounds nut torque, tension nut torque. I don't think Anything I have pertains to this. I'm certainly not going to uh, 100 pounds or 140 inch pounds, I don't think. I'm going to hand tighten them for now. If somebody knows something different, please let me know. Right now, ignorance is bliss. So that's going to wrap up today's episode. If you haven't already done so, hit the like button, the subscribe button, 
and the little bell for future notifications so you don't miss any good videos like this when they come out. So thanks for watching, stay tuned, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Goodbye.